Hey everybody, I'm Tarl Yarber with Fixated Real Estate and we are here walking one of our beautiful properties that we just purchased here in Seattle, Washington area. We're actually in a little area called Auburn, Washington. I have never been to this house. So one of the things we do when we buy these properties is sometimes I don't need to walk them because we have kind of some systems process and everything. So that way I can see everything from the desktop, uh, from our computer versus having to actually walk the house. Now, I wanted to do this video for you guys today to show you what I look for on a property on the construction and rehab side for some of the challenges that might pop up on this project, some of the things that you could look for on your projects before you buy them or even after you buy them. Because once we get into these projects, some things get found out, some things that we didn't see was wrong in the beginning when we bought it gets, gets shown into light after we buy it, which isn't always the best thing, that's called a change order. And on this house, I've been told there's a few issues that kind of popped up that we weren't really uh, expected. One of them uh, has to do with uh, bugs, and I'm going to show you that too. So come with me. I'm going to walk around the house. If I was walking this house for the first time, I've said this before on other videos, we would be taking photos the whole time. We do the entire exterior first, then we go on the inside of the house and we take photos everywhere we go. But for the nature of this video, I'm not going to take photos because that's kind of boring. So. If you're watching this video live with us on BP right now, uh, we're going to be doing question and answering too throughout the video, but most of that we're going to try to save towards the end of this video. Uh, if you have anything particularly pressing, go ahead and type that in. We are monitoring the questions on here and Rosie uh, will be able to answer those questions or ask those questions to me if they're uh, awesome questions. So if they're not so awesome, ugh, I'll try to get back to it later on the comments when we go to uh, write them up and stuff later. So if you're watching this on a replay, you want to add, ask, ask those questions. I'll do my best to monitor those questions on Facebook too. That said, let's go see what the hell we find out on this project. First off, if you guys see this, the first thing I'm looking for is big ticket items, big red flag issues on a property. The very first thing that you can tell immediately is that roof has a big ass lawn on it, right? So all throughout the roof, you got all this moss and everything. It happens here in the Pacific Northwest all the time. Uh, I never know why people need two satellite dishes, but those are an issue too. Uh, it's got vinyl siding, which isn't a big deal, but it is a red flag for me. If I need to remodel this property and change windows and move stuff around, vinyl's not very popular in our part of the world. It might be popular where we are, where you are, but it's not popular where we are. So it's a little bit harder sometimes to find the right vinyl to match uh, what we replace. So if we move a window somewhere or move a door somewhere on the exterior, and we can't find the vinyl siding to match it, it becomes a big issue. So to me, that is a red flag, and I need to make sure we can match that before we go. Some other issues, obviously, I'm not gonna point out all the cosmetic stuff, but the door stuff, the windows, if you come to the windows, besides the fact that they're broken, these are also wood windows. So these are old school wood windows. Oh, shit, watch yourself. Uh, so these are old school wood windows that we already know we're gonna need to replace. Uh, depending on how the framing is around there is another issue because these are the old school windows. They probably weren't framed correctly for the vinyl windows that we want to put in. And we're going to have to pop those off and stuff, uh, including some of the siding to get the window in unless you retrofit it, which isn't something that we always recommend. So I'm going to go through the exterior first. Some other aspects, the gutters are pretty messed up. We know we're going to spend some money on that. This house actually, before we came here, used to be just completely engulfed in uh, blackberry bushes and other hedges. So we've already had our landscapers come by and clear this up so that I could see it more clearly. I know there's some windows in there in the basement. That's something I'm gonna look at when I go inside. Uh, the reason why that's an issue is that if that's a bedroom, that's too small of a window for a bedroom in the basement. So I wanna check that out later. So I'm noting that in my head. Uh, I'm also seeing that the meters here. So if you ever wanna find where the panel is, if you're looking for the electrical panel inside a house and you can't find it, one of the best ways to look for it is to go on the outside, find out where your meter is. Uh, this is going down. So that means that the panel's probably in the basement somewhere. So I'm gonna look for it there. If you can't find it, that's one little trick to figure out where your, where your panel is. Some other items, uh, wood windows again, a little bump out. Uh, I see a bunch of gutter messed up. There's gonna be rot in some of that fascia board. That's gonna be something that's gonna come up as well. So things that we kind of already know on a messed up house. This house was vacant for two years before we bought it. So it actually got purchased uh, at an auction, uh, not by us, but kind of a creative way another investor bought it <laughs> and then uh, not through his traditional auction. Uh, and then we bought it from them. So um, anyways, come check out the rest of the property. So obviously this stuff's messed up. It's old, it's nasty. Uh, we'll probably get ripped off. Pay no attention to those women running away from us over there. They, uh, that's our entourage. They follow us everywhere. 
we go. I don't even know their names, but <laughs> so we could uh, so when the rest of the house I'm looking at too. Here's an issue right away. I didn't notice this because this used to be completely overgrown, uh, but this siding doesn't match. So I already I mentioned earlier, red flag, vinyl siding. I noticed that this is some of the old siding here. That's not brick. This is kind of funny. You guys can see this is just uh, not even waterproof stuff. <laughs> but, so that's going to need to come out. I don't know what this is for. This is some irrigation system thing that they set up for maybe some extra water hoses or whatever it might be. Uh, and we'll check out what that is. But if I'm walking this property and if you're walking this property and you don't know what any of this stuff is, the best advice I can always give you is take pictures of it, make notes of it. So that way you can have other people uh, maybe give you bids, give you opinions and stuff on it because you can send it to them and say, hey, what is this thing? What's that? Is this something I should be concerned about? Right. We'll go in the rest of the house in a second. There's some outside stuff I'll show you guys, too. Uh, if I'm going through it, there's no gutters. Right. That'll need to be replaced. So this is a good thing. So this is a window well. Uh, so there's basement. So we already know there's bedrooms in the basement. I haven't seen it. First question I ask when there's basement bedrooms is, is there legal egress? Uh, and right now there is. We couldn't see these because this was completely covered in bushes and we had no clue if there was legal egress or not. Uh, now we know there is. There's a little bit of issues with it. Uh, one is this is ugly, right? So for us, we're gonna make this house super freaking beautiful. Uh, and if we're gonna make it beautiful, this brick is not the prettiest thing. So we could do a few things on that. Maybe we uh, uh, cement it, skim coat it, mortar it, make it prettier, paint it, that kind of thing. We could rip it out and re put in new ones. That's a little bit more expensive. We'll probably go a more affordable route. One of the issues with window egress in Washington though is drainage. So if I see this, water comes down, there's no gutters. That's an issue, water pours down, goes into the window well and could potentially go into the house. So that's another red flag. Got to get gutters and got to make sure that there's appropriate drainage in that window well so it doesn't go back into the property. Just something to pay attention to that you can note depending on where you live. You live in certain parts of the world where like the desert, you probably don't have a lot of basements uh, and you don't need to worry about that. So let's check that out. We do have something over there. We'll go see that in a second. Uh, the rest of this. Really, it's just the rest of the house. So we got some, I'm not really noticing anything that we don't already know. So, but it's good to check it all out. We couldn't see any of this because this used to be all blackberries. Uh, they have some ghetto fabulous drainage system on the gutter up there to get it away from the house. I don't think we're going to keep that. So, uh, but let's see what's over here. We got the garage. Ah, fuck. <laughs> <laughs> blackberries. Ah. Those are awesome. <laughs> all right, so the garage. Beautiful, beautiful garage, as you guys can tell. Um, siding again, roof's a pain in the ass. We're gonna need to deal with that. And let's check out the inside. So I'm looking for anything in this garage because it's an older garage that might mean that it's not gonna stand well. We have a lot of old, old, old garages in our market here that might be 100 years old. They weren't framed correctly. Homeowners over 100 years do weird things to them. Uh, and I'm just trying to make sure that the framing is good. That's the, my biggest thing. The rest of it, it's an exterior detached garage that doesn't have to be super beautiful in our area because if, believe it or not, appraisers um, don't really need this to be the code as much as they need the house to be. It's kind of weird how it is. I don't know why, but it's just weird. So I'm looking to make sure that this is all good. Um, I don't really like this. This is an old school kind of trust system thing, but we'll probably strap that better. Uh, the rest of it is just crap, but it's not going to fall apart from what I can tell. I was hoping we could get this into a two car garage, but, uh, the garage depth, the garage length isn't long enough from, from this. This is only big enough for a one car garage legally. Uh, so that's unfortunate. They do have this weird part here. That's, that's hanging down. Uh, that's not necessary. It's going to actually make it impossible to get a garage door opener with this here too. So we'll need to take that out. Uh, just things that you'll need to note if you're doing this on your own. Uh, and then, of course, you know, nobody wants a, this is not a real garage door. So <laughs> we want a better garage door in there. So we're going to check, check that out too. Now, it, sometimes you get really, really lucky on these projects and you find treasure, right? So we found the coolest boat that we're going to get all fixed up and just make it our own, like make it like a mascot for our company fixated. 
Uh, so you guys have to check this thing out. It's, we got really lucky. It was in the bushes. It was hidden. I don't know why the homeowners didn't take it. Um, but, you know, we can soup it up. Here we go. And uh, the ladies are already getting it ready for us, too. Uh, they're uh, mapping out the floor plan for the project. On the boat. They're on a boat. Motherf I mean, oops. <laughs> <laughs> So <laughs> this is going to be the SSS fixated, sponsored by Bigger Pockets as well. We're going to put uh, both uh, stamps on that. They, it's it is 36 degrees out here, else they'd be in bikinis for you guys right now. Do you but... think we can get ready until the next summer? Yeah, yeah, I think we're getting ready. Okay. This is going to be our uh, mascot for our, our sorry, our, our what's it called, our flagship. That's right. <laughs> but that's a treasure. A boat. In reality, we could probably sell, sell the uh, trailer for tens of dollars. So um, we'll make some money off just that. <laughs> <laughs> the rest of this, if you guys saw this beforehand, heavy landscaping costs, heavy landscaping costs, and also uh, major, major trash. So we weren't, this would video would have really sucked for everybody if we did this before we trashed out the property, because I wouldn't have been able to go anywhere. Uh, so I'm going to show you what the rest of the project looks like inside and point out the major issues and what, how we're going to design the floor plan. Because uh, that is a big factor on this project. Here's another weird part. Look at this. That's all part of, once again, that drainage thing. So got to figure out what it's connected to for water and uh, if it's even something that needs to be kept. Because it doesn't, it needs to get ripped off immediately. All right, back door. This is already kind of weird. You just kind of, this is not really a mudroom area. It's not really a good transition spot. I don't like it. Uh, it's enclosed. This door is probably only 26 inches. This is not even a good size of a door. So imagine you coming to your home or bringing guests to your house, they come in through the back door uh, and this is how they're greeted. If you're buying a totally fixed up uh, house, that's kind of awkward. So this is gonna need to go somewhere. This house is uh, 2,400 square feet from what I remember. And this is the kitchen as is. Uh, if their kitchen is this big for a 2,400 square foot house, then it's not big enough, right? That's one of the challenges on this project right away when we first came in. Now, if you're buying this house, one of the first things you might think is how do we open it up and make it bigger? Well, there's a red flag from what I saw from photos is this wall here would be beautiful to open up to go into the living room, but we have an issue. There's a big ass chimney. So if you have that big ass chimney in the way, uh, there's always a, uh, a reaction to everything that you do. So some, some other thing that's gonna happen after you do some sort of other remodel. So in this project here, if we wanted to open up this wall, then we have to open, then we have to remove this chimney. Now this chimney probably, this is a, there's a basement underneath here, so the, base, so the chimney continues to go down. That's a lot of cost to remove this to hopefully make the kitchen bigger. And you gotta ask yourself, is it worth the cost of removing all of this and getting rid of this chimney, which is a great fireplace once we get it all fixed up for this living room uh, that can produce heat. Plus it goes all the way to the basement. So it might even open up in the basement too. Sometimes there's a dual, uh, dual fireplace. Uh, is that worth it to make the kitchen a little bit bigger? Or do we try to find another way to make the kitchen bigger? Pay no attention to her. <laughs> so, uh, Ms. Rosie, say hi. Uh, it, maybe there's another way we can do that. Maybe in this area here where this funky door or whatever. There's stairs that go down to the basement right here. We're starting right about this area. Actually, actually exactly that spot. That's a framing number. Maybe we can cut this out and make that a little bit bigger area. Maybe we get rid of this pantry, right? And find a way to maybe shove a fridge in there. Or, uh, we're gonna have to work with what's here, unfortunately, or else we have to rip out the entire chimney. And that might be not worth it. So let's go check out the rest. Uh, this whole place was a huge mound of garbage <laughs> when you first walked in here. And I'm looking at the ceiling. There used to be a wall here, you can kind of tell. And a little zigzag. And you also have these, which nobody on the team wants to touch that stuff. And I'm not sure if anybody can tell what any of that is or down here. Look at that. Those are carcasses. So earlier my team was in here and they informed me that those are bed bug carcasses. They are in the vents. They are in the walls. They're everywhere. 
Uh, we've also been informed that bed bugs don't live very long if they get nothing to eat. So uh, this house was vacant for two years. So fingers crossed, or else I'm burning everything inside my house when I go home. That these are not live. That there are no live bed bugs in this house uh, because that was a surprise. And what's going to be really interesting is if we open up these walls and just see it just like collapse full of bed bugs or something like that. Uh, but that would really suck, and I'm not going to be here for that. And we're not going to videotape that because I don't think Alex wants to be here for that either. Right, Alex? No? No. No, not at all. All right. So the rest of the living room. Uh, oh, I noticed something too. So I don't know if you guys saw that. But. Oh, shit. <laughs> <laughs> what the fuck? Anything in there? I don't know. I did not think that was going to happen. So that was probably from water damage, if I had to guess. I was joking earlier that there might be a bunch of bugs inside there as soon as you open it up. I didn't think that was going to happen. All right. Well, that's an issue and there's no bugs pouring out of it. So it's not arachnophobia or bed bug phobia or something, but uh, that there, the roof's messed up. You guys saw the lawn on the roof. So there's gotta be some sort of water thing happening at some point. Uh, they also had, you can see they try to patch this too. So these are, you can see water stains. These are, uh, these are sick, you know, these are obviously key points to be able to watch out saying like, hey, the roof leaked or it is leaking or something's leaking or at some point. So you gotta explore that further. We definitely got to fix that now, <laughs> so we know that hole. Um, I was told by my team too that this house has to have a master suite up top. So right now it is a four bedroom, two bath house, a bathroom up here and a bathroom in the basement. We need a master suite on the main. Why do you want a master suite on the main floor if you have a basement? Well, because most people would rather have their master suite on the main floor than buried in the basement. So how can we get a master suite back here? Let's go find out if we can do that. <laughs> So we have two bedrooms. This has old school acoustic sound tiling stuff on it that nobody likes anymore these days. If we had to save money, then we can always leave that and paint it. Uh, if we have a budget for it, which we probably do, then we can then we're probably gonna rip it off and sheetrock it or just put sheetrock right on top just so it looks better. Uh, but this is good sized closets, really good sized bedroom. And, but there's, we still gotta figure out this whole bathroom thing. So you also have this bedroom here. And decent sized bedroom. Look at that. Uh, huge closet. And once again, I'm not going to point out all the cosmetic stuff. If you're flipping a house, it's obvious you're going to fix all this cosmetic stuff. You're going to replace all the doors. You're going to replace all the trim. We're not going to keep this beautiful bed bug infested uh, wallpaper stuff anywhere. Uh, and if those of you guys are watching this, you actually. These might not be bed bugs. I don't know. We were my team was googling like with the carcasses, looking for photos, and that's what they found. If you think it's something else, then you let us know because uh, we're happy to happy to get your advice because we have no clue. And I don't even know how to clean this shit up. So all right. Uh, so this is a good bedroom. That's a huge closet. Uh, there is a bathroom behind here, so maybe we can do something with that. This is a really weird bathroom. <laughs> so let me ask you guys a question: Would you rather? Keep this massive soaker tub and kind of shower thingy uh, and just let the whole house use this and you can all shower and soak in this. Um, or would you rather, if you had a master suite, would you rather have a master suite? Right. So what we're probably going to do is we're probably going to cut this bathroom in half, right? It's a pretty big bathroom. So if you're looking for how to do that now, um, you need some sort of minimal measurements to be able to cut a bathroom in house half. Uh, we already measured this before we started this film. This is 11 and a half feet this way, and it's nine feet this way, except for this bump out, it's seven feet, right? So seven feet from the wall. So the closet is over there. So that's seven feet width as well. So if we go from here to and out, then we got seven feet. So in order to make a toilet, so basically go toilet or vanity, toilet, tub, you need a minimum of seven feet to do that if you want a 24 inch vanity. You got 24 inches for the vanity. You need 30 inches for the toilet because it's 15 inches on center for code, most codes. Uh, if you don't want to do it to code, you can make it smaller. Uh, and then 30 inches for the tub. So that's seven feet. So you need that. So this is exactly seven feet. So we know we can get a toilet vanity tub, right? Uh, we can also do a walk-in shower, which is probably going to do. We know that that, that is a closet over there. So we can basically cut this bathroom in half, 
and take some space into the closet, maybe make it a little bit, big, figure out a way to configure it to where we have more space instead of five feet, because the minimum for a tub is mostly five feet. Uh, so five feet width, 30 inches, sorry, five feet length, 30 inches width. Um, or you get, they have some short tubs that are four feet. You can mess around with those or four and a half feet, something like that. But we're gonna cut into the closet. We're going to put a master suite here. We already have a lot of water and plumbing here, so this is perfect. And then the rest of the bathroom will turn into the hall bath. So we'll go hall bath here. Don't even need to move the door, right? And then master suite on that side. Just a small master suite. That'll be a massive thing. It's just gonna be a decent side master suite with a walk-in closet next to it. And actually pretty easy. Now cost for plumbing uh, doesn't really change much, right? If we replace all of this, right, this is all crap. I mean, just replacing this shit is gonna suck, uh, even if you had to do it, because this has jets and everything, and it's been sitting here for two years and not worth the cost. It probably costs us more to replace this, fix this, and remodel this whole bathroom than it would be just to gut all this stuff and build two bathrooms, right? Believe it or not, it's kind of it's kind of funny how it works that way, mainly because of this jetted tub. Uh, and nobody wants this crap anymore in houses like this. It's weird. They'd rather have a walk-in shower. Uh, ask yourself, if you have a jetted tub at home, you might be that weird person that does. I'm joking. I think jetted tubs are kind of cool. Uh, but if you're one of those people that have a jetted tub, how often do you use it? If you had just this, wouldn't you rather have a shower? So yes, most people would rather have a shower. So my, think of that when you're flipping houses. I'm on a rant right now. But think of that when you're flipping houses is that it's not what you want. It's what everybody wants. What's the average person want in the house? Like you're not trying to model the property to a specific person. You're modeling the property to basically a commodity based aspect so you can sell it to the masses, right? Only when you start getting into those high end homes, those luxury homes that you should get kind of creative. When you're dealing with like, this is a, this is gonna be a 400 something thousand dollar house, 430, 440, by the time we're done with it, in Auburn, Washington, we don't need to go high end. <laughs> so that's a, this is a, this is a first time home buyer house in Auburn, maybe a second time home buyer, depending on where they bought their first house. Cool, so that's a big issue here. Let's go to the basement and show you the real crappy stuff. So it's not crappy because we they cleaned all the crap up. So it's bad. So we already know we're gonna deal with this shit, right? This is bad. And it's kind of odd to go through the kitchen to get to the rest of the house. That's kind of an issue too uh, for the basement. We can't change that though. You can always move the. Some of you guys might think, "I'll oh, just move the stairs." Well, there's always a, there's always something that happens. There's a consequence to anything you do. Engineering needs to get done when you start moving stairs on remodels. Uh, you can't just like a normal permit system. You actually need most of the time an architect or stamp for that. Uh, and on top of that, where are you going to put the stairs? Then you got to change the floor plan for the kitchen. Then that changes the entire layout of the basement and it just starts to progress. You can do anything you want on these houses. Just how much money do you want to spend? That's really what it boils down to. And if you're in this business for investing, you want to spend as little as possible for the maximum value, right? So that's all you should be thinking the whole time. What can you do to the property to make it awesome without spending a ton of money? <laughs> so you can get the higher value. I'm looking through this. The stairs are, these are legal code stairs. That's one of the first things I'm gonna look at at these older homes is sometimes they have like really narrow stairs with really short steps or really big steps, or they have really, uh, the treads are like nowhere near the code. Maybe they're only like six inches, right? So I'm looking at all that. Is this a legal staircase? for today's code and right now, yeah, it even has a brass handrail, right? Which probably not gonna keep that. Uh, head height, this is all good. This one's a little low, right? But it's grandfathered in, so it's all good. All right, this is just a weird, weird basement. <laughs> so we do have a bedroom and another bedroom and then a wall. Let's go check this out first. So first off, ceiling height. Right, that's a little low. And I'm gonna ask myself, if you guys are walking this, I'm gonna ask myself, ask myself, ask myself, why is the ceiling low, right? When the rest of the house isn't. So I'm gonna look around, and Alex, if you can see this, get in here. Oh, yep. That's why. Those are ducks. That's a huge duct, right? That's a nice duck. The big, big, big ass duck. Uh, they have these uh, these have these low revealed ducts now. So if we want to, we definitely can't keep this. This is low ceiling. Whatever's behind here, we're gonna find out in a second. Uh, but this is not attractive for the house. We need to have this a fully finished basement 
and to make it nice. Like this needs to have some sort of family playroom area, some sort of great room area. We do need to keep two bedrooms down here. Uh, we do need one bath down here. So we know we need two bedrooms, one bath, and at least a family area or some sort of media area or something like that to make this work, right? Right now, this sucks. You come down the stairs, and it's just this weird thing with this low ceiling, right? So we got to figure that out. And you also have a mechanical room. So we're going to put the wash, uh, sorry, uh, the washer dryer, the, the hot water tank, and the furnace. We're going to put all that. So we know we need to figure all that out here in the basement and not have it be weird. So let's figure out what's behind here. <laughs> uh, there is a cement step that comes up. So my first guess is this is a footing. If I'm looking at this, and if this is a footing, then this is a load wall. Because why else would there be a cement step in the basement going through a major wall right here? Uh, actually, let's find out if this is a load wall. Come with me. All right. How do you know if it's load? These are these these are big two by tens or two by twelve two by twelves. Jeez, two by twelve floor joists, and they're running this way. So if you look over here, Alex, you can see. Here's two of them sistered together. There's two of them sistered together. Those are bed bug webs, right? No. <laughs> uh, and then this is resting on here too. This whole these this whole joist is our beam is coming across and resting on this wall as well. This is 100% a load wall. When you have multiple floor joists resting and they're resting like this, right, or like that, on one wall, that becomes a load that needs a footing as well. So believe it or not, a cement slab is not a footing. Uh, you actually need a separate footing for that. And this here, for the looks of it, this is doubled up joists as well to act kind of like a beam since they didn't want a wall to carry. So it's these joists are changing angles a bit. Yeah, this is hard to explain on the video, but basically, oh, this is carrying the stairs here. And then this is resting on here with no hangers. It needs hangers. It's just nails holding that up. Uh, and then this is carrying the rest of these joists and then this is resting on this wall too. So, and there's a post here going down. So this whole wall right here is definitely load, right? And if that's load, then I can't just knock that out. I have to beam the crap out of it or put some big posts in or do something. That means there's a footing down here as well too. So this is carrying the upstairs basically, right? Hey, since we're in here, let's finish up in here. <laughs> so, all right, so this is, well, it looks like this is a mechanical room of some sort. And the rest of the house actually continues going that way a little bit uh, from the looks of things. Oh, there's the panel. So I told you guys that the uh, exterior, so that this must be the front of the house. And this thing here is the main feed coming in for the panel. Uh, and this is actually a pretty good looking panel. It's obviously doesn't have everything it needs in it. Uh, but it's going to get fixed. So that's a good thing. I don't need to replace the panel. We just need to fix the panel, right? So that's going to save some money. And I don't need to move it anywhere because it's in a weird, nice, good spot. Uh, main water line coming in. And that's leading to the water heater over here, which is, is this a good looking water heater? <laughs> so it blew up somehow, right? So it's got it's a gas water heater. Uh, it's got an expansion tank. At one point, this was actually to code. It looks like, what was that? So this thing here must have opened up. So this is the main pressure release, right? So or the TPR valve. Um, so the uh, temperature pressure release valve. So this is missing. So this must have blown up at one point and water spilled everywhere. So, or something happened here. Who knows? This might have water in it, who knows? All right, I don't like this, but this is actually a least water heater. So go check this out. So it's leased from and owned by Puget Sound Energy. Installed by fast water heaters, blah, 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 blah. All right, so that tells me that this is, okay, so this sucks, by the way, if this is a leased water heater. So now what we gotta find out on our end, I don't know if you guys have leased water heaters in your area. Um, that means that we don't actually own this. And for me to just rip it out and throw it away, I'm gonna get a call from Puget Sound Energy saying, hey, there's a lease on there and you owe us money, right? Because you got rid of the, the hot water tank. That's dumb, this is a shitty, I'm sorry, this is a bad water tank, right? So we need to call them now and say, hey, take your water tank out. And there might be a chance that they actually wanna get money from us to take this tank, even though we can't throw it away because there's probably some sort of agreement. Um, we're gonna now need to dig into that, right? There might be a way we, we, we could probably get them to take this away and not cost us a penny because it's obviously a very bad water heater. They'd have to pay to replace it, blah, blah, blah. 
and we just say, just get rid of it. We don't want anything and no lease, then we're probably good to go. So we're gonna have to dig into that. Uh, anybody know anything about grow operations? Right. The only thing I can guess of why you have some sort of extra venting going in through this to go back out there. And I also noticed earlier that all the vents are taped off in the house is there might've been some sort of grow operation going on at some point. This is not that cool of a grow operation though, if that's the case. Uh, we get a lot of marijuana houses. And actually we did a marijuana house that burnt down actually. <laughs> so um, the this plumbing is janky, looking at that. So here's a quick tip with uh, plumbing drains is that they shouldn't have a bow in it like that. Water just will sit there. So this is doing something there. I don't know what that is. Uh, check this out. Get down there. All right, look at that. So that is the back of a tub from my guests and we'll go find out here in a second. Here's where all the plumbing goes in the house and it goes into this pit. So can you guys, you guys guess, is it a big pit that it goes into and then all the poo goes in there and that's where it goes or does it do something else, right? From my experience, um, so you would think that might be a sub pump and that's not a sub pump. That is a grinder pump that is totally missing and not there and doesn't have everything it needs like the cover and all this kind of stuff. So the grinder pump is busted. Now, what is a grinder pump? If you're asking, I bet you are right now. Uh, a grinder pump is we're in a basement. So the sewer is not always the same grade as the basement. So if this is a below, below the sewer grade basement, means you have to get all this wastewater up and pushed up into the sewer. So a grinder pump will grind up everything, right? Grinder pump, uh, all the poo, and put it into the pump and basically then work as a sub pump the rest of the time and pump it up out and give it enough pressure so it gets into the sewer from going uphill, water goes downhill, go uphill. With the grinder and then push out so that's messed up most grinder pumps are going to cost you at least a thousand bucks uh, with install from a plumber so we know that that's going to be a little bit of money and this is all all messed up looking because of that and so we'll need to break that out and figure that all out later as part of our budget that was not part of our budget to have to deal with it but we didn't know this existed uh so let's go check out what's behind here like I said too, this is a ceiling height issue. We can't, this isn't gonna work. I wanna sell this house for top dollar in this market. This is a red flag for this, okay? That's a red flag. Ceiling height in here though, if I had to guess, this is probably seven feet. Uh, and unless you guys think I'm seven feet tall, but uh, I'm only six foot two. So, uh, so, oh, chimney. So that's the chimney, but I pointed it upstairs. We can't open up that kitchen. This is a cool little fireplace that, why would we want to get rid of this? And, but what we could do, if I had to guess, we could open all this up and put a nice big beam with a post or something to make this into a family room area. That seems the most logical way. But if your family room area, which there is definitely a freaking grow house, the, why else would you have this stuff? Like here, or that's a way to insulate. Let's see even the venting. Venting's closed off, like I said. All right, so if this is, this is not how you want to get into your family room. <laughs> so we'll have to do that. See, even the windows are taped off. Yeah, they did some sort of crazy shit in here. Uh, I wish you guys could have seen this when it wasn't before we trashed it out, but you couldn't see anything. It was just nasty, two years. All right, so we're gonna to to figure this out. So what I'm probably gonna do is get my demo guys to rip all this out, figure out, and just open it up so we can just start figuring out loads, beams, all that kind of stuff. Uh, and start explore, exploratory demo, which is a sometimes a fun thing. It's also a horrible thing sometimes because you find things you don't want. Let's look at the bedrooms. Our bedrooms. This is a weird bedroom. <laughs> this, is a bedroom. <laughs> this is the bedroom of the bedroom. <laughs> let's, well, let's walk into the closet before we go into the bedroom. <laughs> this is odd. Oh, maybe there's a desk or something. I don't know. So. One concern that I have, here's a red flag, if you look on the ground, right, so this was carpet at one point, that's why it's like this, and all the glue. Um, the, so if this was carpet at one point, then why did they rip it out? Now I know why we ripped it out, because it was probably nasty. That's why it got ripped out. But here in this area, if you had carpet, or you can see that there's some sort of flooring in the basement, and they took it all out before you went to buy it, one of the questions I always ask is that, why? And 
almost always it's because of water, right? For us, it's because of water in our part of the world. So what is it in your part of the world when you say, what's a red flag that happens on these properties for you that is in your neck of the woods? Some areas it's termites, like people cover termites depending on where you are. Uh, some parts it's water issues like us. So what's yours and figure that out. This area, I'm not worried about water in here. It doesn't smell like water. Uh, it was a finished basement, like everything was fine. This was just nasty. That's, I think our own demo guys took it out already. <laughs> so uh, we're not keeping any of this. Another vent taped up. It's either taped up because of all the, the grow or there's a bunch of bugs in there and they don't want it to pull it, pour out. Who knows? Uh, <laughs> more bugs. Check this out. Oh, wow. Yeah, those are all the carcasses. Go in there. Come on, Alex. Oh, great. Go, go, go. Look at that one right there. Those are good ones. Mmm, yum, 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 yum. The delicacy. So it's funny, my wife was one of the people on the boat and she couldn't go in here. She ran away like, she's like, right. so. <laughs> that's my reaction. That's the problem. <laughs> you like my wife. You could be my wife, Alex. Uh, all right, so this is a shitty bedroom. We're gonna figure this out. Uh, it's really long, it's awkward. It's even to a point where I say, why do you need any of this? Why not like just take this part out open it completely or just make this part of the bedroom instead. And that way this just becomes more of an open space when you come down the stairs or make a storage unit down here or maybe put a washer dryer in here or do something to make this not awkward. I mean, it wouldn't be bad to put washer dryer over here, get rid of this wall, right? And then have like the bedroom on that side. That way it's just more accessible to the upstairs. That's one thought. Uh, this bedroom seems cool. Egress window, like I said before. That's what we locked on the outside, so we saw that. Um, other than that, this is not an issue. We're not gonna keep any of this. We'll, we'll rip all this out and then just sheetrock it um, with a normal closet. So we'll just put like a bifold doors and stuff, or bypass doors. And then this bathroom. So I bet you this is seven feet, like we talked about before. 24 inch vanity, toilet, tub, right? Uh, other than that, we're just gonna gut this thing and put it all back to normal. We'll put a normal, nice, beautiful vanity, toilet, tub, uh, and we'll just, we'll have to rip this lid off because it's all, all messed up. This is nasty, check this out. Look at that, beautiful, beautiful fan. So that's, that's all going. So <laughs> we'll need to gut all that, all the venting needs to come out, everything. Uh, and those are, those are the major issues on this property. Now, if you guys, to kind of sum it up, when you're walking these houses, one of the first things that this is, there's a lot of remodel here. You can budget so much on this project and spend a ton of money making it way, way, way better, right? Or what you can do what we do, which is how do we do the, the best rehab for the least amount of cost? We don't have enough budget to sit there and just destroy, open the kitchen, rip out the entire fireplace or anything like that. So we know we're going to deal with a little bit smaller kitchen. So maybe we look at the comps to say, okay, did the comps allow us to have that size of the kitchen? Is it worth it or not? It probably will be cool. So if that's the only like weird thing, it's not the end of the world, we can make that a little bit better. We know we need a master suite upstairs. We have the ability without changing anything hardcore around us to cut a bathroom in half and make it two bathrooms. So we're saving some costs there. It's great. We don't need to reshape the whole bed house or move things around because framing infrastructure that really starts to escalate to other things. You move one wall, well, you gotta also move the electrical. You also gotta redo the sheetrock. You also, gotta, if it's a load, you got beam issues, you got all that kind of stuff too. If there's plumbing in it, now you gotta move that. And it's like, so what's all this collateral stuff that happens when you reframe and, re and move walls around a house if you're not familiar with how to do it? We have this wall over here, right? We know it's a load wall, right? So, but we know it is an issue because you come downstairs, this is a really messed up family room. Do I wanna move everything around? No, because now we're dealing with bigger issues, more load walls, more issues, right? So we're gonna to try to keep these here the same, but we need to open this up and make this more beautiful. We can't have this. This is only because of the HVAC system. So that means we gotta figure out the HVAC too. So we gotta make the HVAC system smaller. We gotta maybe put cadets in. We gotta reroute the venting, which means more stuff. So all of those things come into play when you're remodeling a property that you have to look for. What's, what's each step going to affect the next step? And it comes back to cost. We can gut this whole thing, start over, no reason. We should keep it all kind of the same, just change a few items on it, make it clean, make it beautiful, uh, and it should be good. Now, 
besides that, right, wrapping up, when you guys, if you guys have any questions when it comes to rehab or remodel or anything or designing floor plans, uh, we'd be happy to answer them for you. Just go ahead and add those into the comments section uh, here on this video, whether you're watching it now uh, on Facebook or you're watching it on YouTube. Uh, you can also make sure you follow, like, subscribe, everything with bigger pockets. You can also follow me, Tarl Yarbrough, on Instagram as well as my company, uh, Fixated Real Estate, on Facebook and Instagram. And we hope to see you guys at other future videos. And at this time, if there's any questions from Rosie, from the rest of you guys, now's the time to do that. Uh, Noah Hollister asked if uh, what the purchase price was and if you have a budget for remodels. So yeah, so the per what the hell did we buy this place for? Uh, we bought it for 220, 223. We bought it for 223,000, right? I wasn't gonna do all the numbers on this one, so but I'll, I'll do that. Uh, so 223,000, our budget on this house was 95,000, right? So that's where we're at. Now the roof bid, we already have one big issue. The roof, we budgeted seven grand for the roof, right? Because we figured it's a one layer tear off, tear off, all that kind of stuff for us. Well, our roofer who we use all the time came back and he's like, hey, it's 11 grand, right? And we're like, you're screwing us, <laughs> James. <laughs> so for, uh, but uh, we've had another roofer come out and said it's 12 grand. So I think we under budget. So we're now already looking at we're about like $4,000 off on our budget due to the roof. I'm still going to beat him down though, get him a little bit lower because he does a lot of roofs for us. Um, but it's because there's like four layers on the roof that we weren't familiar with and all this kind of stuff that's going to create some of it's a lot more like demolition and trash uh, to tear off the roof, which creates a lot of load, a lot of weight and a lot of labor, uh, which is what is increasing that cost. But we were already off four grand on one item. But we are saving some money because that bathroom is a lot easier than we thought it was going to be. That's it. Perfect. If you guys have other comments on this video and you guys are following it on Facebook Live, go ahead and ask those questions. Uh, I'll review this video later at a later date uh, and help you guys like these type of walkthroughs, take some notes, uh, and go watch the replay if you guys need to see it again. Uh, this eventually will be on YouTube too. See you guys later. Bye. All right, turn it off quick before they, before they ask more questions. <laughs>